Hello everyone and welcome to another video here on White Coats and Corgis. Today I'm going to show you a clip from the Pre-Med Experience, which is a free event I created and hosted back in March 2023. The goal of this event was to connect pre-med students with admissions experts and make their advice a little bit more accessible. We talked with admissions committee members, deans of medical school admissions, and MCAT tutors. Today's clip is from our very last session of the day called Real Truth with Real Medical Students. All right, let's go ahead and get started everyone. Uh, good to see you all again. And thank you to our medical students for joining. Again, I'm Dan. I am a second year um, internal medicine resident and I'll be moderating the panel. So I'll be looking for questions in the Q&A portion below. But first, again, I want to thank our medical students for joining us. And I'm going to go one by one and you just introduce yourself if you can and um, tell us what year you're in and maybe what specialty you're interested in. And the first person I see here is Angela. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited. My name is Angela Rakowski. I'm a rising third year. I'm at Rush in Chicago, and I'm currently interested in OBGYN or neurology, keeping an open mind. Um, definitely very excited for rotations. Awesome. Um, next, I see Brooke. Yeah. Hey, y'all. Brooke, Brooklyn. I am a fourth year medical student. Cannot believe it. So on edge with MASH next week. Um, I'm in Texas and I also um, am finishing up my MPH during medical school. So that might be relevant to someone. And uh, um, I'm kind of revealing what I'm applying to soon, but it's more like primary care focus and trying to incorporate public health in my career. Awesome. Um, next person I see is Zara. Hi, I'm Sarah. I'm in South Florida. Um, I'm a third year medical student and I'm currently interested in emergency medicine, um, but it changes like every day. <laughs> so stay tuned. Fair. And um, the last person I see here is Kinza. Hi, everyone. I'm Kinza. I'm a fourth year medical student. I'm actually here in Massachusetts and I am applying psychiatry. Um, Angela, question for you now, um, and this is like a broad question and everyone probably has their own answer to this, but like, again, medical school is very hard, but what would you say the hardest part is? Like, what does that really mean that medical school is hard? Is it like the amount of time that you're studying it? Is it the content? Like, what does that really mean? Yeah, definitely. So this is something I wondered for the longest time when people say medical school is so hard. I'm like, what does that actually mean? Because thousands of people go through it every year. Um, and so while I think the hardest part is just how much information you're learning at once. And also, God forbid, if you're going through something externally in your life, like the health of a loved one, your own mental health, something's happening in your life because life does not pause when you're in medical school. Balancing that with medical school is the hardest part, in my opinion. It's not the information. The information that you're learning is not necessarily hard. It's a lot of it, but it's manageable. We all do it. We learn it. We somehow it sticks. Um, but it's just balancing like if there's other stuff that needs your attention more, then it becomes really hard to do everything at once because in medical school, it's like every single day there's so much and it's so easy to fall behind. Even when you start early or you try to get ahead, you're still behind. That's how it always feels. It's like, you'll probably hear the quote, it's like drinking out of a fire hose or water hose, whatever. Um, that's very true. But it's the material is not actually hard because everything you're learning is directly relevant to things that you're going to be seeing in the clinical setting. So it's really interesting. I really love the material, but it's just a lot. And especially if there's stuff going on externally. Thank you so much uh, for sharing Angela see, because it's, you know, everyone's gone through challenges and, and every single person you ask could have their own situation and story. And it's something that is important to deal with and then to overcome. Um, so thanks for sharing that. And the next question we have here is for Brooke, and it's a combination of a few questions we have here from Thelma and Jennifer, and it's about life balance with studying and, you know, doing the things that you enjoy doing and just how do you stay sort of mentally well in the process of being a medical student? Yeah, absolutely. This is so important and it's going to look different for everyone. And so even though this is kind of, it may make sense in hindsight, like really one of my biggest advice to people is to be in tune with what you specifically need. And that can be tricky because that could be not what your friends need and that's okay. Um, you know, peer pressure never stops, right? I know a lot of my friends like to go out on the weekends. Your girl needs to sleep. I need eight hours consistent or I am a mess, right? And so you have to be comfortable prioritizing your needs because the end of the day, like you can't show up for 
you know, anyone in your life or your friends or anything, if you're not prioritizing your own health. And so one of the things I always emphasize is just, yeah, really be in tune with what's best for you and not what's best for everyone else, which this can get really mixed on social media, right? Like something could look so good on a reel. It could be so like the perfect video, but if it's not like realistic to you or something that's really hard to apply, then I mean, it's good. Try things out. Right. But don't force anything because that's what looks best. So I guess to answer the question, a little bit for me definitely therapy has been really important because I mean uh, it's just hard to even have that balance if you're just so in your head and you know so many students especially with oh y'all this anxiety in medical school has been a roller coaster and so really being able to talk through that out in a safe space is just going to set you up positively for every other aspect of your life you know and I think truly the biggest thing about having balance as a medical student is forgiving yourself and not feel guilty when you take a break. Um, I so because it's one of those things where you could rest, but if you feel guilty for that rest, it's not going to provide those amazing benefits that it truly can, right? Even recently, my friend was like, Oh, I felt like I did nothing. because I was trying to tell her to take a break. And I'm like, feeling like you did nothing and actively doing nothing or self-care are two very different things, you know. And so whatever that looks like for you, and it's kind of typical medical student culture to be like, oh, I feel so guilty blah, blah, blah. And like, like unpack that, right? Like we shouldn't be feeling guilty because again, then it's just a lose, lose. You're not already getting the rest of time that you are. And so I kind of hit on different points, but definitely just keep it really personalized. Cause that's going to go so far. We all need different things, right? Um, therapy, if that's applicable to you, which I think it is for most people. Um, and, uh, oh my goodness, what was my last point? I forgot, but you know, that's the gist. <laughs>